Hello and welcome to chapter 7 Peace, Order and Good Government We will be focusing on peace, order and good government which is a residuary power that encompasses all matters that are specifically not assigned to either of the heads of powers. This power has three branches the GAP branch, the National Concern branch and the Emergency branch. Let's dive deeper into each branch. The GAP branch of the POG power is the power to fill gaps or lacuna in the distribution of legislative powers between federal government and the provincial governments. This power is used in cases where a particular matter is not explicitly mentioned in either of the federal or the provincial heads of powers. The GAP test is based on the residuary nature of the POG power, which allows it to fill in any gaps not covered by the enumerated head of powers. Examples of the GAP test include the power to incorporate companies with the object other than provincial, the power to perform Canadian treaties, the power to guarantee equal status of French and English in federal institutions and agencies, and the power to regulate offshore mineral resources. The National Concern Branch of the POG power is a concept that allows the federal government to legislate on matters that have originally been of local or provincial nature but have acquired national significance or concerns. The current test for determining whether a matter falls within the National Concern Branch is whether the legislation goes beyond local or provincial concern or interests and must from its, its inherent nature be of concern to the Dominion as a whole. This test was established in Canada Temperance Federation case and has been applied in three cases by the Supreme Court of Canada. The emergency branch of the POG power was initially considered valid only for emergencies as reflected in early case laws. In the Board of Commerce case in 1922, it was suggested that the POG power could only be invoked in exceptional or abnormal circumstances such as war or famine. In Toronto Electric Commissioners v. Snyder, in 1925, the POG power was only considered available in cases of extraordinary peril to national life of Canada, such as those arising from a war. The margarine reference in 1951 saw federal legislation prohibiting the manufacture and sale of margarine got struck down as the emergency argument was rejected. Emergencies that have been recognized as valid grounds for exercise of POG power including war, apprehended insurrection and inflation. One key characteristic of emergency branch of POG is that it's temporary in nature. This means that the federal legislation enacted under the emergency branch is only intended to address a specific emergency at hand and it is not intended to be a permanent solution. In conclusion, the emergency branch of the POG power allows the federal government to make laws in situations of emergency such as war, apprehended insurrection, inflation, etc. This power is temporary and intended to address specific emergencies at hand. The relationship between national concern and the emergency branch of the POG power is a complex one. The national concern branch allows the federal government to legislate on matters that have acquired national dimensions or concerns even in the absence of an emergency. This branch provides the federal parliament with permanent jurisdiction over distinct subject matters that do not fall within any of the enumerated heads of Section 92 of the Constitution Act. For example, aeronautics and national capital region are subject that may fall under this branch. On the other hand, the emergency branch allows federal government to legislate certain matters in the event of an emergency regardless whether the matter has acquired national dimensions or concerns. This branch provides the federal government with temporary jurisdiction over all subject matters including general ones like inflations need to deal with an emergency. This temporary jurisdiction operates as a partial and temporary alteration of the distribution of powers between federal parliament and the provincial legislature. It is possible for a matter to fall under both national concern and emergency branches of the POG. For example, a matter that has acquired national dimensions or concerns and is also related to an emergency could be subject to federal legislation under both branches, 
In such cases, the federal government may have the authority to legislate on the matters under either national concern or the emergency branch, depending on the specific circumstances. The peace, order and good government power has been a flexible and important power of Canadian constitution since its inception. It has allowed the federal government to legislate on matters that are of national concern or that require response to an emergency. However, it is important to balance the federal power with provincial powers in the interpretation of POG powers to ensure that there is a proper distribution of power between two levels of government. Over the years, the POG power has evolved through judicial interpretation and legislative actions. The Supreme Court of Canada has played a key role in interpreting the scope and limitations of POG power. While the federal parliament has enacted legislation under the emergency branch of the power to address various emergencies faced by the country, and in conclusion, the POG power remains an essential part of the Canadian constitution, providing a means to the federal government to address matters that are of a national concern and require an urgent response. As the country and its challenges continue to evolve, it's likely that POG power will continue to evolve through judicial interpretation and legislative actions as well. However, it is important to maintain a balance between the federal powers and the provincial powers in interpretation and the use of POG to ensure that Canada remains a strong and unified nation. Let's come to the case laws. The first one is Reference Ray Anti-Inflation Act. This was a landmark case in Canadian constitutional law. In this case, the Supreme Court of Canada was asked to consider the constitutionality of the Anti-Inflation Act a federal law that aimed to combat inflation in Canada. The Act granted the federal government the power to implement wage and price controls. Court considered two branches of POC power in this case, the National Concern Branch and the Emergency Branch. The National Concern Branch allows the federal government to legislate on matters that are deemed to be of national concern, even if they don't fall within any of the other specific powers granted to the federal government under the Constitution Act. The emergency branch allows the federal government to legislate on any matter in order to deal with an emergency. The court held that Anti-Inflation Act was not within the National Concern Branch of the POC power because inflation was not a matter that was distinct from other subject matters of provincial jurisdiction. However, the court held that the Act was within the emergency branch of the POC power because it was a temporary measure that was necessary to deal with an emergency situation. The court therefore upheld the constitutionality of the Act. The Reference Ray Anti-Inflation Act was an important case that established a test for determining whether a matter is within the national concern branch of the POG power. It also clarified the relationship between the national concern branch and the emergency branches of the POG power and their respective roles in the Canadian constitutional order. This case highlights the importance of balancing federal powers with provincial powers in interpretation of POC powers and continued evolution of POC powers through judicial interpretation and legislative actions. The next case we'll discuss is Reference Ray Greenhouse Gas Polluting Pricing Act. This also was a land landmark decision by the Supreme Court regarding the constitutionality of the federal government's efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in Canada. The Act, which imposed a federal carbon price on certain fuels, and established a system of carbon credits, was challenged by several provinces who argued that it was an infringement on provincial jurisdiction. The Supreme Court of Canada was asked to determine whether the Act was within the legislative authority of the federal parliament and if it fell within the peace, order and good government, POG power. In its decision, the court found that the Act was within the national concern branch of the POG power because the climate change was a matter of national concern with international and extra-provincial dimensions. The court also held that the Act was a valid exercise of the federal government's power to regulate trade commerce under Section 91.2 of the Constitution Act. The decision was a significant victory for the federal government, which can now continue to implement national environmental policies, including measures to combat climate change. The Reference Ray Greenhouse Gas Pollution Pricing Act represents a significant development in the interpretation of POG power and provides a framework for the regulation of greenhouse gas emissions under this power. 
The decision reinforces the importance of balancing federal and provincial powers in interpretation of POC power and highlights the role of Supreme Court of Canada in interpreting and clarifying the Canadian Constitution. That's it for the POC power. And uh, again, uh, this is right now we are looking at the entire Canadian Constitution law from a very theoretical point of view. In the exam, uh, the questions will uh, will require us to do an analysis in certain situations where some law is challenged or some act is challenged or or uh, you know there is this there is a question on whether a subject matter falls within certain uh, under provincial power or federal power and uh, attending those questions will require you to uh, put a proper analysis in a in a IRAC format and we'll get to that so don't worry if you feel that uh, i will not i don't understand how will i answer this in exam how will i apply these this knowledge in my exam uh, we'll get to that i can understand i even i used to think about it a lot but until we go to the exam workshops, a lot of it will seem a little scattered. But mo the, the moment we started uh, doing the exam workshops and we look at our exam formats, uh, everything will come together and connect. So, yeah, uh, let's be patient about it and focus on our studies. Uh, see you in the next class.